All right, but we got to turn it on, make sure it works, right? And boy, let there be light. <laughs> Look at that. Hey guys, this is Katie with Vintage and Vinyl on a rainy day here in Florida, and we are going in one of my favorite local hardware stores, Curry Thomas, to pick out some parts for our lamp conversion. So I'm going to show you in this video how to make a lamp out of an old camera, and we're going to go inside this old-fashioned hardware store that's been here a million years, shop local, and find some cool lamp parts. So let's go, guys. aisle and one of the first things we need for this project is a cord switch so we're going to pick this one up here for $2.99 these are relatively inexpensive and we're going to get this dark color here because it's going to match our cord nicely you can get different cord switches in different colors depending on the cord you're using and I like this darker color to match our camera and the cord. Last thing you need is a basic lamp socket so we're going to pick up one of these here now you can get them in different tones of metal depending on what you're working on but the standard seems to be gold here so we're going to go with that this is a 4.99 so not very expensive and you can see how we're going to wire that together so that's all you need with the wiring and we are going to get a drill bit and some light bulbs now you can use any light bulbs you want but i like the edison bulbs because it gives more of an industrial feel and uh, I'm sure that you can pick those up at any hardware store in your area. So next thing you're going to need is a basic lamp cord. Now you can find these anywhere, but the ones you want to pick up are the ones that have the plug attached to the end that goes into the wall. If you get them without the plug, you will have to wire the plug on and buy the plug separately. So it's much easier to get the kind that has the plug on one end and the raw wires on the other that attach to your lamp socket. Now they have two colors available here. They have a brown and a white, and we are going to go with the brown because I think that matches our camera a bit better and that's all up to your preference. If you do this at home, you can choose whatever color you think best fits your camera or lamp that you are wiring. You're gonna need some glue for this project because you're gonna be basically gluing this lamp socket into the top of your camera. So I like to use E6000, you need a good metal glue. E6000 works well. You can also go with a two-part epoxy that does metal. So basically any type of glue that works well with metal is what you need here. And I'm going to pick up this E6000. You need is some basic sandpaper because what we're gonna do is rough up that metal a little bit so that when you adhere the epoxy to it or the E6000, it does stick to whatever it is you're gluing it to. In our case, that's the camera and you want to make sure it's good and roughed up so that that glue can adhere a little bit to the metal because glue doesn't work well with smooth metal surfaces. We're also going to need a basic screwdriver for this project. Uh, I believe most of the 
uh, lamp sockets are flat head. You may also want to have a Phillips head around just so that you can have it in case your lamp socket uses that. Uh, what we're going to be doing is taking the screws off to put the wire around the screws and then screw them back in so that you can basically wire your lamp together. So a basic screwdriver goes a long way in this project and it's something nice also to have around the house in case you do any other projects. And you can always get a screwdriver that has removable bits so that you will always have the right size when you need it. For this project, you are going to need a drill. It is really handy to have one of these around your home for any type of future projects. So I have this one at my house and I love it. It is a Porter cable, 20 volt lithium drill. I use it all the time and it is really fantastic. So you just need something that you can drill a small hole with and this will work beautifully. But if you don't have a fancy drill, you can always go out and pick up one that is a little bit cheaper, but I highly recommend this brand. Not sponsored, just one of my daily use drills and I think it's fantastic. So definitely think that it's worth investing in a little bit higher quality so you can use this over and over again in your home because drills are just great to have around the house. Of course you're gonna need some drill bits for this project. You wanna get a drill bit that is the same size as your uh, lamp socket here so that we can drill down into the camera. Now if you're drilling into plastic, you wanna make sure you get a drill bit that's good for that. Uh, with our basic card cardboard camera, I think any of these will work. If you are using a drill bit set, that's probably the best thing for your buck is to get one of these sets here so that you will have different sizes for different projects you need in the future and it will be a great addition to your drill at home. All right, guys, well, we are back from the hardware store with all the supplies we need to make this camera lamp, and I'm very excited about it, as is Louie. Now, I've done a couple of these. I've made a phone lamp and another camera lamp, and it's always a lot of fun trying to figure out how to put these together. Now, the basic wiring is the same, and that kind of converts to every piece that you're gonna use. But when it comes to the camera or the item that you want to turn into a lamp, you can run into some challenges on figuring out where the wire is going to go and where the socket is going to go. So this is a box camera and I thought that we'd start with this project because it really is the most basic of all the camera conversions that I've done because it's pretty easy. You're just mounting a light socket to the top and running the cord out of the back. So you're not going to have any hard things to try to figure out. With the phone lamp, I had to figure out how to get the cord to kind of come up and have the handle so it looked like it was, you know, a sculptural piece and run a wire through that, a piece of copper. I had to bend it, run the cord through that, figure out how to run the cord through the bottom of the phone. And then you can even go a further step where you put in a switch where the rotary dial is. So when you dial it, it turns off and on. So those kinds of components are a lot more complicated but you can add them to anything that you want to convert. And basically, guys, the sky is the limit when it comes to some of these vintage items. You can pretty much turn anything into a lamp, which I think is pretty fantastic. And I just love that. So we're going to start with this basic brownie camera today. Now, these are pretty easy to pick up. So anywhere in the world you shop for vintage, you will probably find one of these and you can pick them up and do a camera conversion. Now, here's the deal. I like to try to buy things that I'm going to make into a lamp that are damaged because I know then at that point I'm not taking something that's valuable or harder to find and turning it into a lamp and making it basically a non-functional piece of vintage. It's functional in the fact that it's a lamp, but it's not a collector's working piece, if that makes sense. So this camera I picked up off of eBay a few years ago. The top is damaged there. So it's got um, a broken strap <laughs> and I don't think that this camera works. So if you find something like that, it is the perfect item to turn into a lamp because it, you're not worried about it being a high dollar collector's piece or something that you're not gonna find. So I really liked the fact that this had some issues and usually at that point you can get things at a cheaper price because you're buying things as is and they're great for camera conversions or lamp conversions, whatever it is that you want to take and turn into a lamp. 
So Louie is very excited. You can hear her rumbling around in the background there. And we're going to get started with this. And guys, this is a very easy project. You can do this in probably about under 20 minutes. Of course, there's going to be some dry time with the glue and some other things. But this is simple. Anybody can do this. And basically, guys, if you follow similar steps, you can rewire a lamp. So if you've rewired a lamp before, you can do this. And if you do this, you can definitely rewire a lamp. So let's get started and talk about some of the items that we're going to need for this project. Okay, so some of the items that you need for this project, you're going to have probably lying around at home and others you can pick up at your local hardware store. None of the items featured here in this video for this project are going to be overly complicated. These are very common things and they're great to have around the house, particularly if you're wanting to rewire old lamps. So let's just get started with some of the basics you're going to need. First, we'll start off with all of our components. You are going to need a basic lamp cord wire. Now you can buy these. These are very inexpensive. I think this one cost me around $4, which is a great bargain. And uh, it is just a fantastic cord here. You can get them in different colors. This one comes in brown, but you can get silver, gold, black, white, whatever color you want to match your project. So you need a basic lamp cord. Now, the thing that's really important about these lamp cords to look out for is you want to get the ones that have the plug attached to the other end. You can buy just basic lamp cord by the foot, but the problem with that is then you have to learn to wire a plug on. And while that's not overly complicated, here we're trying to keep this project very simple and very easy for the average person to do. So I like to work smarter, not harder, and get this piece with the plug on it. Now, the other thing to note about these is that you don't want ones that come all together. And what I mean by that is you can sometimes buy plugs and sockets together already ready to plug in the wall and screw in your Edison bulb. Those are great if you want to do like pulley style lamps or some sort of industrial hanging by your bedside, but they're not going to really work for this project because you're going to have to drill a really large hole in the back of the camera to get that plug to come out through the back. And for these smaller cameras, it just doesn't work very well and it looks kind of messy. So just go with your basic lamp cord with the plug. These are uh, 18 gauge cords and they just work beautifully. Now, the next thing you're going to need is a basic socket. Now, there are several different types of sockets here. This one is just your basic lamp socket. So it has a switch on the side, and then it's got where the cord comes out at the bottom, and then a place for the bulb. You can get different styles of these, and depending on what style of vintage item you're converting, you might want to go with the ones that have the screw cap, just depending if you're doing some uh, more complicated uh, lamp projects, but this basic little one is going to work beautifully for us, and I think this cost me $4.99. So again, not very expensive, and these do come in a variety of tones of metal. Now, I did mention in the shop with me that you're going to need a basic switch. This is something that you only need if this socket does not come with a switch. You really don't need this unless you want to add a cord switch or you're buying a different type of lamp cord for a very specific project where you want to add a switch. Now you also can buy basic switches that are not cord switches and if you get more complicated into these projects you can actually install a little switch on the back and there are videos online on how to do that if you want to be a little bit more complicated and more professional with your camera lamp. But I like just the basic socket because they're very simple. Now, the next thing you're going to need really is all now about the tools. And these are things that you have around the house probably, but if you don't, they're very easy to pick up. The first thing you're going to need is a basic Phillips head screwdriver. Now, I like this screwdriver here because it has multiple changing bits. So if you don't have a lot of cash or you want to just be economical and you don't do a lot of things in the way of tools, this is a great tool to start with because you can have different bits and different sizes and it all fits in this one screwdriver. So it's very easy to use this for multiple projects. So I keep this in my drawer at home and I use it all the time and I love it. So we are going to need the Phillips head bit for this and it's just a basic screwdriver. Now you're also going to need a pair of electrical pliers. Now you can do this with a basic set of needle nose pliers. You got to be careful when pulling off uh, that wire bit uh, when we are pulling off some of that um, uh, excess wire cord here. You don't want to cut the uh, wires inside the copper wires. So a wire 
a stripper on a set of electrical pliers is really handy and it just makes your life easier. And these are nice to have around the house, again, for different electrical projects and rewiring lamps. So what we'll need is just a basic set of electrical pliers. And I did pick up a new pair because mine are getting pretty old and raggly and I like these because they have a nice grip on the handle. You want to splurge a little bit more for a good pair of pliers so you're not fighting with a cheap pair that really don't have sharp teeth or a good grippy handle. Now the next thing you're going to need is some E6000. So I did pick this up at the hardware store. My tube was getting old so I got myself a brand new tube. And uh, this is just fantastic. It works for metal, for wood, for fabric. E6000 pretty much glues anything to anything. And that is a great glue. You need something that is going to adhere to metal. If you have just a regular glue that doesn't do metal, you want to go get a metal glue because you are going to be gluing the socket into the top of the camera and you need this to stick and be nice and firm. And speaking of gluing things to the camera, you are going to need some basic 80 grit sandpaper. And that is because you don't want to just glue this to the camera without roughing up the bottom metal piece a little bit first because of course that will help it adhere just a little bit better. So you don't need a big bunch of sandpaper but just enough to kind of rough up the bottom here so that glue does adhere a bit better. So we've got our 80 grit sandpaper here. Now the other thing you're going to need is a drill and I've got just a basic drill here. It works beautifully. I love my drill and that's something again that's just really nice to have around the house for different projects for hanging pictures. It's a very multi-purpose tool and I highly, highly recommend getting a, getting a drill. Uh, you could do this with an old fashioned uh, hand crank drill if you have one of those, but uh, I think that would take a while. So I highly recommend getting an electric drill. You're also gonna need a set of drill bits here. I like these because these drill into wood and metal. So they are perfect basically for any project you're going to do in the future. If you're gonna be drilling through metal, you need a metal bit. If you're drilling through wood, you need a wood bit. And with this, this is just a cardboard outer shell, so it shouldn't be too much of a problem. But some of these do have metal casings on the inside, so in case we hit some metal, I wanted to make sure that we have some metal drill bits. So this is just your standard drill bit set that you can get from any hardware store and uh, they usually run good sales on these often and they're just great to have around the house. So that basically is it. Now you will need a light bulb for this project and I like Edison bulbs. I think they are wonderful. There's just something about that warm amber old fashioned glow that just makes your house so cozy. Now the thing about these is they do come in a variety of wattages and not to get too technical, but obviously the higher the watt bulb, the hotter the lamp is gonna get. And sometimes these guys can get pretty hot. So I don't recommend going with a 60 watt bulb. I like to get a lower watt bulb. I tend to go around 25 watts and you can pick up a whole pack of these on Amazon for under $20. I have a whole bunch of these lying around my house. In fact, I buy them in bulk because I do so many of these projects. They're just really great to have stashed up in my uh, little supply closet for when I need these for a future project. Now, the nice thing about Edison bulbs is they do come in a wide variety of shapes and sizes. So you can get basic ones like these, you can get long ones, you can get all kinds of cool designs and shapes. They're just really wonderful. Now, I personally do not care for the LED Edison bulbs. They do make those. But to me, they're a little bit sterile. They're still not as warm and cozy as these old fashioned ones are, these incandescent bulbs. So if you can find them in that style, I highly recommend it. And uh, I would uh, buy the LED if you don't want something as hot. So it's really up to you, LED incandescent. Get whichever you like, but I prefer just the standard old fashioned Edison bulb with the filaments just fantastic. So guys, that's really it. All you need for this project uh, is just these simple supplies. And it's going to take about 20 minutes to do. And of course, you got to let that glue dry a bit. But other than that, folks, it's easy. And I tell you, anybody can do this. It's not as hard or scary as you think. So I mentioned at the beginning of the video that you are going to need a uh, cord switch. And this might be the case for some of your harder lamp conversions when you're doing things like a telephone. But with a basic box camera, you really don't need that because 
this light socket already has the switch on the end. Now, if you want to, you can add switches, and I have seen people do some pretty cool things where they add like a fancy switch to the back of the camera. I've seen all kinds of things, and if you want to do that and make your camera a little bit more professional, you can look up different videos online on how to do that, but today I'm trying to keep things simple. So basically all you need is the lamp cord and then this lamp socket because it has the on off switch here. But you can add one of these cord switch pieces in if you would like a standard switch onto your cord. And these are extremely easy to install as you see there on the back, but you don't really need this. It's just an extra step. All right, guys, well, we are going to jump right into this project and it is very simple, so let's get started. All right, so the first thing we're gonna do is drill our hole here for the top of the socket and for our lamp cord to go out of. It's very easy to do. So we're gonna mark our spots at the top. The first thing we need to do is remove this strap. This is just gonna get in our way and it's already broken. Now you can see how brittle this is. So I am literally just going to tear this off the top, kind of use my hands to pry it. You can get a pair of pliers and break this off if you want. You do not need this at all. Um, it's just gonna get in the way of the camera. If you do wanna leave it on, um, you can find a way to preserve that, I'm sure, but I am just going to peel this off here because we really don't need it. And it's just so brittle, as I said, it's just coming right off. So there is our camera without that little strap. So we are going to put that to the side. We will not need that. So what we're going to do now is figure out the center point of the camera and where we wanna drill our hole. So I should have mentioned at the beginning of the video with the instructions and the list of supplies you need, you will need a ruler and a pencil, but I do believe most everybody has these lying around. So what you're going to do is basically make an X in the center of the camera lengthwise so you can figure out your center point. So we're gonna do this with a pencil so that you can still see that lead, but you can erase it later. So we're making a line up at the top and you're gonna do this from the other side just like this, and we will get our center point of where we want to drill our hole, and you can mark that there at the top of the camera, and then of course we can erase these lines later since this is a pencil. So we have our center point there at the top of the camera, and we are going to drill our first hole out of two for the light socket. So basically what we're going to do is fit this light socket down into the top of the camera and glue it like this. So now that we have our camera marked for the center point to drill our hole, we are going to need to pick out the perfect drill bit. So you can set your camera aside for just a minute and we are going to look into our drill bit set here and pick out the perfect drill bit. Now you wanna find a drill bit that's about the same circumference as this hole here because obviously we are going to fit this down into the hole. So you don't want something too small and you don't want something too big so it's loose and flopping around. So it's really finding the Goldilocks of the drill bits. Now I can already tell that this one is probably going to be just a little bit too small so we are going to go with the three quarter drill bit here and we are going to pick that up. I think that's three quarter. Nope I'm reading it upside down so it's three eighths. So that's probably going to be just about right and by doing that I'm holding this drill bit up to the hole here and kind of gauging its size. You can do it this way if you have like a screw or something and just sort of measure. So I can tell that this is probably gonna be just a little bit small, but we're going to make it work. So it's not at least going to be too big, which we don't want. So you can always make something a little bit bigger, but you can't make it smaller. So we are going to pick our drill bit here, which is three eighths, and we are going to put it in the chuck of our drill and basically drill our hole. And then we will um, start working on wiring our lamp together. So I've got my drill bit in, and then we are just going to drill to the top of the camera here. Um, and all you have to do is just drill in a straight line to uh, the center point hole that you marked. So we're going to put that drill here and just have our hole and just get that little piece centered and just drill through it. Now you're gonna to wanna to hold steady onto the camera so that it doesn't flop around or twist in the drill bit and just put some nice firm pressure and start drilling, keeping it nice and steady. So now that we've drilled all the way through, 
It's very easy to drill through because this is just a cardboard shell. We can see if our socket is going to fit in it. And it might be, like I said, just a little bit too small. So we're gonna make this a tad bigger. I don't have a bigger drill bit, um, but you can just sort of rock that drill bit back and forth to kind of widen out that hole a little bit right here. So that's what we're gonna do. And we're going to get all of that cleaned off and then fit our piece down in there. Now it doesn't have to be perfect because again, this is not going to show. So we are going to take our set screw out because that's gonna be a little bit big. Um, and we don't need that set screw as I mentioned. So we're gonna get our screwdriver, take out that set screw here. We do not need it. We are not wiring a lamp. This is just a basic camera. So that set screw does not have a purpose in this application. And we are going to fit this down through the top. Now the hole that I have is a little bit too small. So we're going to make that a bit bigger. Um, actually, probably an auger bit would be just a little bit easier or a hole saw. Um, although I think a hole saw might make that hole a little bit too big. So we're just gonna continue to work this around to just make it a little bit wider. And when this is done, folks, I'll be back with you. All right, guys, so we are back with our hole. Now, this hole doesn't have to be pretty because, well, we're not gonna see it. So it is okay if it's a little bit rough. I have got this ready to go and I can fit my light socket down in there now. And the next thing we're gonna do is drill another hole. Now, this hole does not have to be very large because all we're doing is fitting our lamp cord through it. And as you can see, that is a very, very thin cord, so we don't need something super large. So we are going to go back to our handy drill bit box, pull out a drill that is a, a little bit smaller, just enough for the cord. Again, holding that up next to the drill bit, kind of doing some measuring side to side to see if that is going to work. And I think we need something just a little bit bigger, so we are going to go with a quarter of an inch, and that should be just about perfect there for our cord. So we're going to get that in the chuck and drill the hole. Now this hole does not have to be perfect. You can mark it out if you would like, but you can also do this by eye. And I'll show you what I mean here. So we've got our back of our camera. And basically you can put the hole anywhere you want on the back. This is going to be the bottom part. And that is probably the best spot for this hole to go because we're going to run our wire from the socket down the back of the camera and out the back so that the cord hangs nicely. So I would do it somewhere in this area here and uh, I'm just going to freehand it because it doesn't have to be perfect. So somewhere in that back corner and we're just going to drill a small hole. Again, holding onto that camera steady, applying pressure and drilling down. All right, perfect. We've got a nice clean hole there out of the back and we are going to be able to feed our wire through this. So we are going to test it out and we are going to run our wire through there and see if that fits. And if it does, which it is perfect, that will work beautifully. Now you don't want that hole too large, but again, you don't want it too small. We don't want to rub the wire too much. And if it's too loose, that wire can get pretty yanked around. So we've got our two holes drilled and that's really all we're gonna need as a drill. So we can put that away. Now, before we get wiring the lamp cord, basically we are going to rough up the metal part on the bottom of this lamp socket. So what I've got here is a small piece of sandpaper. And basically this is just gonna make the glue adhere a little bit better because when you try to glue smooth metal, it doesn't always work very well. So what we're going to do here is take our piece of sandpaper and just rough up that bottom part. You do not need to rough up onto the top here, but just the bottom part. And we're just going to go back and forth like this with our small piece of sandpaper that you folded up and just rough that piece of metal up a little bit so that it's all ready for your glue. All right, so that is basically all you need to do, and we are now done with the sandpaper. I told you guys, this project is very simple. Now, the next thing we're going to do is feed our wire through the camera and then get this all wired up. So what I'm going to do here, and this might be a little tough because the back doesn't come off, 
is we need to feed this wire through this hole and uh, that might be a little harder to do since we've got to find that wire with our hand. So I'm going to tilt this camera up and basically we're just going to feed this wire through the top here and uh, then we'll pull it through and then you can use basically this uh, and glue it down inside. So now it's just finding the wire. I have had better luck with the box cameras where the back comes off because you can actually see what you're doing. This you're kind of glowing, going in blind. So we'll see how I can find this wire. Um, there's probably a little bit of an easier way to do that. So I'll be back with you when that's done. All right, folks, so we are back and I did have a little struggle getting that wire up to the camera. Like I mentioned, you're using a vintage item that is not meant to be a lamp. Sometimes you do encounter some interesting problems. And one of them that I found with this camera, and again, every camera is slightly different, is that it was a little hard to see where the wire was going when I was feeding it through to actually receive it on the other end. So I ended up using a coat hanger here and I was just able to stick this bent end down through the top and pull that wire through. So you might need to do that if you're having a tough time finding out where this end is coming from in a darker camera. And I was also able to shine a flashlight down there, which worked just beautifully. So now we are ready to wire up our camera and get our light going. So we've got our socket here and we've got our two pieces here. This is the basic end of your lamp cord. They usually come like this. Now the nice thing about this lamp cord is it is already ready with our wires. So they have done a really nice job twisting the wires for us already and adding a little bit of a plate here to the top, a little bit of solder to keep that end from unfrailing, which is really nice. So we are just going to be able to use this like it is. Now, of course, this lamp cord is eight feet. So if you do want to shorten this, all you have to do is take your wire cutters or your electrical pliers here and basically cut it at the length you want it. I'm going to keep it the eight feet for the purpose and ease of this project. And also where I want to put my lamp, I might need a little bit of a longer cord. Now, what we are going to do is show you how to wire this up and it's really easy. You've got two wires here. One has a wire uh, casing here, the insulation that is going to be ribbed. The other side is going to be smooth. So you can feel this with your hands and you can feel that this wire here is ribbed. This one is smooth. That's important because it's going to indicate which wire is which. So the smooth wire is going to be your hot wire and the ribbed wire is going to be your neutral wire. And that is really important when we go to wire up this uh, light socket here. So what we are going to do is pull down our insulation here a little bit. That's just this bit that's covering the wire up so that we have a little bit of length here. And then we're going to need probably just a little bit more here than they gave us. So we're going to cut off a little bit more of that insulation. And I'm gonna show you how to do this. Now, if you did buy lamp wire that's not pre-prepared with this, you can also cut off that insulation and twist your wires. And you could go the extra step of adding a little bit of solder if you want to make that nice and tight. So what we've got here is our basic standard electrical pliers. Now, if you notice on the pliers here, they do have different gauges here. This is an 18 gauge wire, so we will be using the 18 gauge slot. Nice thing about electrical pliers is they are nicely labeled and they tell you what part on the pliers is for what application. And here it is 18 gauge wire. So we are going to put this through to our 18 gauge wire slot right here, clamp that down. Now I'm not gonna pull much more of that insulation off because I think we are gonna be good with the amount that they gave us. But for the purposes of this video, I wanted to show you how to do that. It's very easy. You're going to clamp down, not too hard. You're gonna twist that wire and pull off that insulation and it should just come right off. So I'm gonna do that and then I will get back with you here in just a minute and we will get our lamp all wired and ready to go. All right, so now that we've fed our wire through the top, what we are going to do now is make sure that we feed our wire through this little end piece here. So that way we can connect everything up and get it all glued into our camera. So we're going to feed that on through here and we will worry about gluing that in a little bit later. 
and we are going to get everything wired to our lamp socket here. Now we have pulled this out of the socket here so that we can get to the terminals which are exposed. So we have pulled that out and we've got our terminals here and we are basically going to wire up our pieces to it. So now that we've got our wire stripped off here and there's a bit of copper wire exposed, we're going to create a shepherd's hook, which is what you need to do. You can do this by basically bending a little hook at the end of the wire or using something like this on your electrical pliers to create that little hook. And we are going to bend that over. You wanna make sure these are nice and twisted and solid so that the wires stay together. You do not want any fraying of the wires. So I'm just making sure that's nice and twisted there. Now it's really important once we get our shepherd's hooks done, as you can see here, there they are, to connect the right wire to the right terminal, which is very, very important. So if you notice on a set of wires here, you will find that on the insulation, one wire is smooth and the other is neutral. This is very important because it lets you know what wire you're working with. So the smooth wire is always going to be your hot wire. And then any ribbed insulation here or ribbed wire is going to be your neutral wire. Now that's important as I mentioned because you are going to be connecting it to this light socket and you wanna make sure that you connect the right one to the right terminal. So now that we know which wire is which, we need to know which terminal is which. So you are always going to connect your hot wire here to your brass screw. And you are going to connect your neutral wire or ribbed wire to your silver screw. So just think of it this way, silver goes to ribbed, brass goes to smooth. And then you're going to connect that up and basically guys, that's it, we'll get this glued in and you're ready to plug in your lamp and get it working. So what we need to do is connect that to the terminal here. So basically what you will need is a screwdriver and I'm just going to loosen up that screw there and we are going to hook this around the screw. Now you wanna make sure you do this in a clockwise formation so that when you do tighten that screw, you're not gonna get any fraying of the wire. You do not want wire to fray outside of that screw. You want a nice tight connection there. So we are going to put that on hold that wire down and tighten it up. Now you don't want something that's super tight, but you don't want it loosey goosey either because we want to make a nice connection there. Now we are going to do this on the other side with our silver here. And we are going to put that shepherd's hook on around that wire. And we are going to hold that. You might have to loosen this up a little bit to make sure that you've got enough clearance for that shepherd's hook to go all the way in there. And then you are going to tighten this up. So easy, easy, not hard. You just wanna make sure you're following the right steps and paying attention to what you are connecting. So we've got that connected there. Nice, really solid connection on both ends here. So we got a nice wire. And then we are going to put on our covering here. So we're just gonna put that back on. It fits right up there like this. And then we are going to run this through here. So what we've got now at the top of the camera is the base plate to our socket. We are going to add that in here, just like this. All right guys, so the camera cut me off because the battery died. Of course, those things always happen while filming. But basically what I did was I just connected all of our parts back on to one another. So we've got our uh, lamp all put together here and we are going to now glue this in. Now, before we glue it, I do wanna make sure that it is working. So we're gonna do a quick test before we glue it. So I'm going to put in my light bulb here and then we are going to plug it in and turn it on and just give it a quick test. You wanna do this before gluing that socket down in case you need to make any adjustments, like maybe you didn't tighten the terminals enough and so it is not turning on. So I'm going to plug in my light bulb first. Always make sure that you don't have anything hot before you plug stuff in and do light bulbs. You always wanna turn off all your electricity so you don't get shocked. And now we are going to plug this in and we'll see if it works. I'll be right back, folks. All right, folks, so this is the moment of truth. Does it turn on and, yep, yes, it does. This puppy turns on and lights up right away, so we are good to go. We're going to turn that off 
and we are going to unplug it and get this all glued up. So first let's unplug everything to make sure we're safe and then we will remove this light bulb and get our project glued up and working. All right, guys, we are almost done. This project is coming along beautifully. And now that our light is illuminated, we are going to now glue this together. So we've tested it, it works, everything's good. And we are ready to glue it up and make sure it's nice and secure. Now, what we are going to use is E6000 here. And you just wanna put a little bit under this part here and make sure that it is nice and secured and set before you plug it in and use it. So we are going to open our E6000 here. This is a nice new tube. And when you do this, you don't want a lot of glue. So you really wanna be cautious. In fact, you might wanna get a toothpick or something to use just a little bit around the bottom. So where we are going to put the glue is just around the bottom here, making sure that we really don't get any on the cord. So I'm actually going to get a toothpick so I can apply it a little bit more in a streamlined fashion and I will be back with you. All right guys, so I've got two toothpicks here and really you only need one. And we're just going to take a little bit of the E6000 and run it around the outside of that piece, making sure that we don't have any globs or things that are going to look kind of unsightly when you get this project done. So we wanna apply it very gingerly and carefully around the base, making sure that we really don't get any on the wires. So we are just gonna use that toothpick to apply it. Again, this is you're applying it to the spot where you roughed up the metal so that it will adhere a little bit better. Now, E6000 is already mixed, so it is not a two-part epoxy. You do not need to mix it up. However, an epoxy would also be a great choice of glue if you wanted to use that, and that's what you had on hand uh, because epoxy is very strong and it does bond to metal. All right, so now that we've got our glue here all mixed up and onto our light, we are going to pull it through and fit this into the top of the camera. So I'm going to do this on the side so you can see what I'm doing. I'm just gonna push it down and make sure it adheres. Now, what we are going to do next is set this camera upright and make sure that when this is drying, it is drying straight. So we are just going to check that and that looks good to me. It is nice and straight. You don't want this to be crooked because after all, this is going to be a very nice finished product. And there it is, folks. We're gonna let this dry and then really you are ready to rock and roll. You've got your plug already on the other end. So all you have to do is insert the light bulb and plug this in, folks. It's very, very easy. Uh, it's just such a simple conversion and it is so fun to turn these old cameras into lamps. So we're gonna let this dry up, folks, and then I'll plug it in and I'll be back with you and show how it works. Well guys, the glue has dried and it is time for the big reveal. And oh my goodness, this camera turned out so well. It is industrial, it's cool, and it's just a one of a kind piece. And I hope that this video showed you how easy it is to wire an old camera and make a lamp out of it. It is just such a great way to get your feet wet into electricity and basic wiring. And you can take these techniques that you learned today on wiring this camera and actually transfer that to an old lamp that you might find at your antique store or thrift store. It's very easy to do. And I hope that it inspired you to create something really cool. So are you ready for the big reveal? Here it is, folks. Oh my gosh, this is so cool. Look at the Art Deco front on this camera. I love that. And then you've got the industrial bulb, which is just really spectacular. I mean, what a cool piece. This is definitely fantastic. All right, but we got to turn it on, make sure it works, right? And boy, let there be light. <laughs> Look at that. Oh, I just love this. And there's something about those Edison bulbs with that warm glow and the cool filaments that just make this a really awesome piece. So if you make one of these at home, I guarantee you when people come over, they're going to be asking you where you got it from. And when you say that you made it, they're going to be even more floored and they're going to want to know how you did it. So I am offering you guys a lamp kit. That's right. So if you want to make this at home, you can send me an email and for $20, I will send you all of the parts you need to make this lamp. Now, the only thing you'll need to provide is your own screwdriver and drill, obviously, and a camera. So you can pick out any camera you want in your area and I will be your personal shopper and send you all of the items you need to make this lamp 
if you are interested, just send me an email down below. But look how fabulous this is. Oh my gosh, such an easy project and a really, really cool outcome. So folks, thanks so much for joining in on this Tales from the Triptych. It was a little different than our normal triptychs, but we will be returning next week with a regular format triptych on Soul Nate's channel at 8 p.m. and we'll be announcing that over on Instagram. So stay tuned for that next topic. And of course, we do rotate the triptychs between my channel, Patrick's channel, Trusty Huckster Mercantile, and Soul Nate. They're always 8 p.m. on Sunday, so you can stay tuned to our YouTube and Instagram channels so that you know what our next topic is going to be and you can follow along on our triptych journey. So folks, before my next video, I'll be catching you over on Instagram and I hope you'll subscribe to Nate, Patrick, and myself. And of course, stay in, stay safe, and binge YouTube. Bye-bye everybody. Oh,